Hi there, it is Jo from Minerva if you've not met me before and today I'm here to talk about making a flounce. It's a beautiful design feature but um, sometimes it's quite tricky to handle depending on your fabric choice. Today I am working with Minerva Viscose Chalet, so this is the Celestial Moon um, design. A really dark inky indigo colour in the background and this is the live blouse with a flounce collar and I'm also going to be adding the flounce to my dress. Uh, this is Minerva exclusive uh, fabric called Jelly Party and I absolutely love it. This is the teal colour with all the different um, colours all fuzzed into the background colour. It's really subtle but it's really beautiful. This dress is Simplicity 8637 and on here you've got three different designs. So that is a skirt with a flounce um, and a short sleeve with a cut out shoulder. There is also a long sleeved version with an elasticated wrist, which I really like, as you can see. And there is also a long line version, which I've made previously in a glitter lace fabric as evening wear. It's a really versatile pattern because you can make this dress go from evening to a summer dress, day wear, a party dress, um, just by the choice of your fabric. The pattern goes from size 6, that's a 30 and a half inch bust, up to a size 24, which is a 46 inch bust. Um, but obviously it's a big 4 pattern, so you're going to need to check your measurements. The suggested fabrics are chalet, um, crepe, crepe de chine, um, a cotton lawn which will give you the summer version um, but you will need a light fabric that has a drape because there are a lot of drape elements to this dress and the flounce which is the bit that we're looking at today that's the most important bit that needs a flounce. If you use a fabric that's too thick for a flounce it will stick out and you won't get all of those beautiful ripples which you would like and you need a draping fabric to do that. The flounce is created in two ways. So the first thing is that your fabric is not cut on the grain. So your fabric piece will go across the grain and you will get elements where the fabric can uh, drop in the weave and that's how you get the flounce. If you cut just a straight piece, um, you would need to have gathers that give it the element of um, fluting. But with a flounce, the seam line, the target length, is the same as the garment and the outer edge is uh, fluted and you do that by cutting across the grain. This is the back flounce for Simplicity 8637 and here there will be a join and then this is the piece that attaches on so you get two of those to make one big arc and you have a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance first thing to do when you're making any flounce is to stay stitch that seam line because it's cut on the bias. That's a single line of stitching through just the layer of flounce. Next you're going to join the seams together along that back seam matching the notches. This is where you choose your seam finish because it depends what your fabric is. So if your fabric's got a different colour on the inside, like quite a light colour like I have, you can French seam, you can press the seam open or you can do a run and fell seam. I'm going to do a run and fell seam and I'll show you how to do that. You need to keep your 1.5 centimetre seam allowance so that your overall flounce will fit onto the length of your skirt. Trim out one side of the seam and then press your seam to one side with the longer piece on the top and then you can fold over that longer seam allowance and cover everything up and it looks invisible. 
This is the one of the front pieces. This is the underlapped piece. It's just a single layer. And this is the grain line, so you need to observe that. So it's got to be parallel to the selvage edge. And because you're cutting it like that, some parts of the flounce will be on the bias and that's what gives it its curl and ability to move and be fluid. Here are the notches, you need to mark those because that will help you to fit on to the back pieces that we've just been working on. This is the lap that goes over the top and we know that because it goes slim at the end. Again, we've got a grain line, we're going to keep it away from the selvage, parallel. And this is the outer flounce. Again, we've got notches so that we can match that up. With the back piece. Let's have a look at how we're going to sew our flight so that we get the best finish when it is on our garment and it, we're wearing it at the very end. So this is the flounce that goes on the top. Make sure you know which is the left side of your skirt and the right side, which is the underlap and which is the overlap. Because it's crucial now while you're working with these great big long pieces of fabric that you get them the right way around. So this is the back piece. I'm using the picture here, so I'm replicating the picture, making sure I've got my fabric with the wrong side up making sure I get the left side onto the correct side and the right side onto the correct side. Now this is the underlapped piece. You need to use the same seam finish. It becomes quite a big piece to be working with now, so you need to try and keep all of it on the table. Let's look at the hem finish. We're going to do that before we put it onto the dress so it's easier to handle. The first way you can do it is to make a very narrow hem. So you can use a narrow hem foot, you can um, do a double folded hem around here. You might need to pin it quite a lot. You can do stay stitch, you can hand stitch, you might need to use quite a few pins. I'm going to do a narrow hem with two passes on the machine. After the first pass, I'm going to layer out the spare fabric and then I can turn that hem again and conceal the raw edge. This is the right front, I put a piece of paper on there so I didn't get confused and put the ruffle on the wrong way round. So I'm looking for the right front, which is the flounce with the narrow part of the hem on. And I'm just going to make it nice and neat at the end. I've got a little bit of seam allowance hanging over there from a previous part of the pattern instructions and pinning that in place. get it on evenly you'll be looking for the joins and making sure that they match up with the joins on your dress so this is the side seam I'm going to pin those together and here you can see the difference between the run and fell seam which is much more invisible than the pressed open seam I'm going to carry on pinning around the curve so that it's ready to attach, making sure I get them on the right sides. Attach your skirt, be careful you don't catch any of the flounce, so just keep moving the dress as you're sewing. You can use your stay stitching line as a bit of a guide. Okay, I'm just going to show you the hem. I will. Um, 
give you a final version of the dress worn at the end. So this is where the fabric goes all the way up to the hip and grades out. So you can see it's getting a really nice fall. Even though you can see my hemming, it's a neat narrow hem. Don't forget or don't sort of get tricked into thinking that this flounce goes all the way up to your hip. So this bit of the pattern here, the under wrap of the skirt doesn't have the flounce on. There's a, a mark where you stop and that stops there being too much bulk under your hip on the underlap. So the underlap skirt has the flounce not quite going up to this waistline and then the hem can hang over the top. I um, overlocked the edge of mine, but you can zigzag there too. So you just need to make sure that that's not fraying. You can also top stitch really, really close to the seam line if you want to change your finish. On the back, you should be getting lots of fullness because you had um, the back piece cut twice. So you had two half circles there. So you're getting lots of fullness that matches that same front fullness where you get the fall along the front. So that's how you attach the flounce to Simplicity 8637. Um, if, if you've tried view A without the flounce because you thought, oh, it's a bit complex, um, that's how you do it. Uh, I will tell you this hem, while I've been video and little snippets for you actually took me an hour and 45 minutes to make so that's stay stitching double hemming to get the narrow hem pinning the hem onto the uh, actual skirt and overlocking so it's, it's quite a commitment but it's really worth it for the effect If you would like to add a flounce to something, so say you have um, a skirt wrap pattern like this and you would like to add a flounce to it, you can do that. Um, you will need to do a little bit of maths and I'm going to show you that now. So if you would like to add a flounce to a pattern, so for example, if you have a simple pattern like this, this is New Look 6483, you can cut this pattern shorter and you can add a peplum on the bottom and a peplum is a type of flounce. If you want to create a similar look to the one that I've just made in the dress, you could try New Look 6456, and you could curve out the shape of the right front and left front, and you can add a flounce to this, just like we have done on the skirt. So how do you do it? Well, you need to find out uh, the target length of where you want your seam to join. So if this is the skirt and we want to make a piece that fits on this side seam up to this waist seam, this here is our target length. And what we're aiming for is we're going to cut a circle, which is the outer flounce, and the inner circle is our target length. And then we can cut it and then we'll have a big flounce. What we want to know is the radius here so that we can draw a circle and it needs to be this length here. Let's just say that this is 70 centimetres. We use that as an example. So I'm going to show you the formula and then I'm going to show you the maths underneath. The formula is the flounce length, in this case 70 centimetres, divided by pi which will give you the radius for a half circle, but we want a whole circle. So we want the flounce length divided by pi, and then we're going to divide that answer by two. Let's see what it looks like when we transfer the number. So if you've tapped out already, because you think, oh my gosh, it's math and I'm not great at it. Here's the formula in a sentence. And then all you do with formulas is you swap what you know for the numbers that you know and have got. So the flounce length, is 70 divided by pi which is 3.14 and that gives us 22.2 .2. 
So we would do a radius of 22.2 and we would get a half circle, which means we, um, we wouldn't get so much of a flight. We would just get a slight ripple. So you could do that. If you want more of a flight, you follow the next formula, which is flight length divided by pi, that bit we've already done. And then we're going to divide this by two. So our radius to draw this inner circle is 11.1 centimetres. Let's do that now and then I'll show you how to add the seam allowances and to add your flounce. And if you want to add a skirt flounce, then you use this calculation, flounce length divided by pi then divided by two, to get a full circle flounce. You can also use this for a neckline as well. So um, like on my live blouse here, you can measure the target length from shoulder to the V-neck at the front. Use that as your target length or your flounce length. And then you can make uh, ruffles and features for a neckline. You can also layer up flounces. So we're going to use this centre point here to start our flanks and we need to measure 11.1 centimetres. I'm going to go for 11. And to draw a circle. This is my flounce length and then I can add on my one centimetre seam allowance. You can be more accurate but I'm just showing you how it works. And now you want to know how big is your flounce depth. So if you want a really big flounce you're going to make your radius really big. If you just want a small flounce like one that might go around a wrist or um, around a neck feature, then you can make it a little bit smaller. Okay, let's cut it out of fabric and see if we're getting that 70 centimetre target length. We can also see how much flounce we're getting. I really recommend you spend a little bit more time than I just did there. You can be much more accurate in your circle. If you are doing this for a skirt and you want to braid out, you can change the shape of your flounce. So if I cut that there now, I've got a little bit of room here for a, a narrow hem seam allowance. I could also use a sleeve curve. I've just freehand drawn that. So let's cut that out and we'll see what sort of shape we get when we cut that out of fabric. Obviously, we've got to pay attention to that grain line that we saw before. So here was my radius. So I'm going to keep, that's where I started. So I'm going to keep that on the grain line. You can see it's actually mimicking the shape that was my flat shape when I made the Simplicity 8637. So let's cut it out, hold it up, have a look at the shape.
here's the ruffle that's the seam edge there that will need to be stay stitched and that's called a full circle ruffle if we did the half circle one it wouldn't have as much flounce as that let's check the length so it uh, should be 70 centimeters it's quite tricky to hold flat so it won't be a totally accurate measurement but there we are at the end of that green is 70 centimeters brilliant You can check out some patterns that already have flounces if you don't fancy drafting your own. So McCall's is a good place to go. There are lots of flounce details in their patterns. Um, there is this one, which has got a flounce around the hem. There is this one with quite a flounce detail around the neckline. You can also layer up flounces to get dip different depths and textures. Or if you're finding that hemming a flounce is difficult, you can try this pattern, which is obviously for a special occasion, but um, you will line your flounces. So when you sew the outer edge of your flounce, when you turn it out, you won't have to worry about the hem at all. And you'll also see the reverse of the flounce. I hope you found today's video uh, inspirational or indeed useful. Um, so do head over to our website and check out any patterns with flounces that you might fancy having a go at. This is the Live Blouse and this is Simplicity 8637. This pattern also has a little sleeve flounce as well, which you can play around with. If you've made uh, anything with a flounce or indeed anything at all, we would love to see it. So make an account for yourself. Head over to Minerva and upload your makes. Our sewing community is really supportive and you will get a lot of love for the things that you've made. I've really enjoyed getting into making flounces. The next thing on my target list is one of those wrap skirts that has the flounce around the bottom. That sort of uh, short mini flamenco style skirt. I think they are really pretty for summer. Do call again to check out our tutorials. There are lots of different ones to see. There are sew-alongs, fabric focus ones, educational ones, tips and tricks, um, pattern pairings. There's all sorts to um, inspire you to start your next sewing project. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.